these flowers continue to grow nicely. I even have some poppies still blooming. The weather is cooling off quite a bit here. A little fall planting is doing well. Some red chard, Swiss chard in the back row, spinach in the middle, bok choy, seeds from Rick from Old Camp Ranch. Some beetles got into, I believe it was beetles into the bok choy. So some of the leaves have little holes in them, but I'm not giving up on them yet. The newer leaves are looking better. I think the cool weather will discourage whatever bugs are growing there. Planted little sweet peas on the fence here that are finally becoming unblocked by the pumpkins and stuff. They're just starting to bloom. My squash started, pumpkins and squash started looking like this, powdery mildew. I still have to pull those out. There was a couple live pumpkins on here still, so I'll be pulling those leaves off and throwing them in the yard somewhere so they don't spread the mildew. Napa cabbage continues to do well, outgrows that container, so I planted some in other places. And I've stirred up dirt all over the place. I've planted this morning, there was lettuce and spinach and kale planted randomly all over. We're expecting rain today, which is not good for my house coming. My hollyhocks are growing. I love those. Beefsteak are continuing to produce. They're not looking as great, but big boy lost all the lower leaves. I cleaned them up, but there's a ton of fruit on the top. Cherry tomatoes are still producing a little bit, but they've really slowed down. Cosmos plant here just. That's one plant that took off like crazy. It's almost a shame the end of the summer. Coming into fall here, the freezing temps are going to kill a lot of stuff that's just coming into its prime. Fire pit, I have touched up the paint on it. That was another deal I found at a remedy sale for five bucks which was great because it replaces when I backed over with the truck. Yeah, I ran over a fire pit with the truck. Silly me. And Russian sage. Um, I think that's a Mexican sage. That just started blooming like crazy. It took a while to take hold. But these are perennials. They'll be coming back next year. Russian sage recedes itself. I'll have a whole lot more plants. That'll be great. The cosmos are doing well there. Geraniums are doing pretty well. Didn't get as leafy there in that pot, but it's doing okay. Planted some zinnias. They're kind of, they were selling them at Walmart and earned a lot of money. I don't know if they'll do anything before the winter hits. We'll see. You'll notice my nasturtium went crazy. It escaped and <laughs> went nuts. Alyssum just was going nuts and it reseeded itself down there, but those are just going to get killed by the frost. Garage back there. A little pumpkin trying to grow yet. Here's the stained glass I fixed. Moss rose has kind of seen its better days. It's not doing so well with cooler weather. And the pumpkins I've picked. You can see they got 
pretty big. That's my largest there. Cosmos are trying to grow there. They've been looking poorly sometimes. And there's still crookneck trying to grow. I might get a few more out of there. And some butternut squash. In spite of the mildew, I cleaned the mildew. I took off all the mildewed leaves. So it's still doing pretty well. And there's these peas are finally starting to do something. Those might be perennial ones when they come back. Lettuce and kale, kale and some radishes are scattered about. They'll be popping up with all the rain I wanted to get them in. We had a lot of rain not too long ago. <laughs> and it did this. I'll just leave them go. I might get a few that are still usable. These are brandy wines. Like even with that, there'll be some usable tomato out of it if we don't get a frost for a while. And I think we're good for that. Another hollyhock. Isn't that pretty? That was <laughs> another late bloomer. And some of my hollyhocks are perennials, so we'll see. I have a black-eyed Susan peeking through there. Those were seeds I planted before I planted the tomatoes, and I didn't think they were going to do anything. There's one tomato that's almost ripe. You can see it's leaking some juice on it. But if I eat it quick, it'll be all right. Cucumbers, they were a late start. I did get a first wave crop. That turned out pretty good. I might do one or two. I get coming late here. There's a little bit of zucchini. I've noticed a lot of slowdown in this crop, too. So I threw a lot, a lot of seeds underneath all these plants. The tomatillos did really well. There were some bugs, but no, we have a squash bug or something there. There'll be some ripening yet, but I did get a batch of green salsa made that is just delicious. And then we have kind of a mess here at Fred. Fred! I give them leaves from some of the leafy vegetables to eat. But he continues to mangle that plant he has in there. And I threw some lettuce seeds and stuff in there that are sprouting up that he can eat fresh. He's really slowing down. He'll be ready to hibernate soon. And I have a little patch of peas. That's an area I had dug up recently. I had planted a red raspberry in there that died. And I do have some of that Chinese Napa lettuce or cabbage. Napa cabbage. It tends to just be leafy, a leafy cabbage. I don't know if I'll get any peas. Probably a little late. Still getting some zucchini on that one. Flowers are growing. My little flower areas got some blooms. 
before I just took over. The four o'clocks just keep growing here. They're not blooming anymore. There's my gargoyle. He was just a plain cement one and I painted him several years ago. He's holding up pretty well. English ivies. Looking fairly good. I think they're showing some sign of the cold. The catnip. It's turning color a little bit. The cats will be so disappointed. There's my collection of the red jasper rocks. Speaking of rocks, I have a mail call. And it includes rocks. Won't be long now, and there'll be a house there. The pad is all compacted and set down. We have water in the small line, and that will be electrical wires coming through that one. And we have two spots where there's septic coming in. That'll be under the house. This one will be by the porch. The back door is right around here. And this will get filled in a little more. They're going to bring me another load of this dirty screen, they call it. There's a lot of when it gets washed down with the rain. It cleans up a bit and you see the, the volcanic stone and it compacts really nice so I'm gonna have a load back here and that'll fill in this area back here you can see the red mark for the corner and it goes over that way be room to go beside the house and go around the tree there for the driveway and we added a riser we're gonna put another six inch riser on there to bring it up a little bit to get it even here and maybe even another maybe another foot on top of that so it'll stick out so it's visible it's access to a cement septic tank down there older system that was here on the property because at one time there was an older trailer here. So when we bought the property it had electric and septic already which was a huge bonus and then we added a well. This pipe here goes over to there and my trailer can set up and dump into that and any other when I have company that comes with trailers. But I think we can get that a little bit lower and fill in on top of that possibly and just leave it as a permanent thing. In the shed here got a good deal on a leather love seat. I had been looking online shopping for a new couch. This is sideways in here. So it's the only way it would fit. And this is a leather love seat. Let's see if you can. It's got the nice brass nail head trim and back there. There was wear on the seats. I've cleaned it up a bit. I can always, I think I can work on that a little more. I did a little shoe polish touch up. They do make products that you can redo your seats and stuff. So I'll look at that later. But for now, it's a good test for the cats because I don't know if they will scratch leather. That damage was done from some dogs, I think. So, real nice couch there. I was ready to spend seven, eight hundred bucks, and I got this for fifty dollars through Craigslist. It had been on there a while, and I just 
the people didn't get back to me real quick. I just waited patiently. I have myself a love seat. And my friend Terry, Mrs. Old Camp Ranch. She's my muscle lady. So when I need help moving something, she comes with some help. We managed to get that in the shed here without too many problems. We did it. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. I also have some bins there I got at a thrift shop for a couple bucks each. They were there were tags on it from TJ Maxx. They were fourteen fourteen ninety nine each. So that was a great deal. They'll work really well on shelves. My house will be small. So I need all the storage I can get. I have a doormat back there with hummingbirds on it. Shopped around online, found it on Amazon for a lot cheaper. And they had two different sizes, and I think they sent me the bigger one for the small price. And I have two stools back here that I bought through Amazon. And they were through a warehouse deal where the packaging was damaged. One I returned because it was shipped the wrong color. Somebody couldn't read <laughs> at the warehouse. Amazon has a warehouse deal where you buy through the warehouse and you can get a good bargain, but sometimes it doesn't come out so well. So Amazon's very good about returns if you get the wrong product, so it's worth the chance. Sometimes you have to send it back, but you get a good deal. Hello, I'm inside now in my little trailer. <laughs> I'm waiting for the rain to hit. We were supposed to get rain all day. I've been praying that I don't, which is unusual in Arizona to wish that, but with a house being moved here in one week, I don't want any rain. We get mud holes. The, the roads are dirt for the last half mile, mile. It gets pretty bad. I have a mail call I'm opening here. Actually, I did open it before, so it was hard to open. <laughs> This is from Wolfie, In the Woods with Wolfie. I had sent him some petrified stones, and he sent them back. He's got them all shaped and polished. If I can get them out of the baggies. Now this is one that is a red jasper, which I just love this stone. When I find it outside, it stands out so much against the rest. Oops. <laughs> so that's a pretty nice one. It's such a pretty color. I always go for the bright, bright red, orangey red ones. And here's one that looks petrified wood. He was saying this was partially opalized, he was calling it. And he's left some of the milky stuff on the back that when I find them it has a lot of that on it. So that's a really nice sized one. I'm going to try some wire wrapping on these to make pendants. And here's another one looks kind of like a rose quartz. I'm not sure if that's from a stone I sent him or not. That's awful pretty with the vein going through it. Very cool. Well, be thank you. And he sent us, us, because I have one for Old Camp Ranch and Mrs. Old Camp Ranch. Let's see what's inside here. Oh, one of his little decals. And this would be a cut vinyl decal. I worked in a sign company, several sign companies for, I probably have 30 years experience in the sign company. And... One's a little tricky because they cut it kind of deep so some of the paper comes off. It'll take a little work getting that off there. They're cut out vinyl letters. When you do vinyl lettering, a machine cuts through the vinyl. It's not supposed to cut through the paper. And then you put this transfer tape over the top. And that holds all your letters together until you rub it on a surface. A little, a little squeegee type of thing. So thank you, Wolfie. Very nice. I think I could put this on my car. Maybe. 
someday I'll have to do this. I wish I had a vinyl cutter. I'd do all kinds of stuff. Maybe someday. When I have workspace. <laughs> so my house is coming in hopefully a week. They said it would be released from the factory on the 16th. So we usually ready to ship a few days later. I guess the factory is actually the ones doing the shipping. The guy that does the setup came today with him and the excavator just to review the site and make sure everything was good and nobody's worried except me. <laughs> so, of course. I think it'll be fine though, as long as this rain. So far the rain has gone on both sides of me. That's good. Oh, <laughs> uh, what else have I been doing? I'm ready for the rain. I have my paints in front of me here. And to some people this might look done, but I I keep on going. Huge red onion and garlic and onion. I had actually grew these a few years ago, I think, and I took a photo. And then I started this painting over a year ago. And it sat unfinished for a long time. And lately I've been doing a lot of the detail on this. And the stem of this one over here. You can see that one's laying down. And then the garlic. I filled in a lot. And the, the garlic clove. Um, yeah, we're getting a visitor. <laughs> what are you doing, little girl? What are you doing? Smelling rocks. Okay, wait. <laughs> you are right in the way. No! Okay, good. She didn't knock the ta tablet down. She's a pest. She's the, the most particular cat about being petted. And she doesn't like to be held close. She gets really paranoid. So I'm trying to get her to like being on my lap and get petted. But I think I'm going to be creating a monster <laughs> doing that. <laughs> but maybe it'll keep her off my stuff. Because they're always walking across the laptop. Walking across my painting. Which I paint in acrylic so it dries really fast. So it's usually not a problem. So I'm going to say goodbye now and I think I'm going to start painting again. So thank you for joining me. My name is Cindy and I'm from Bosi Creative Living. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I need more subscribers. I don't know how much that helps. Please help me out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.